Whatever you become intensely emotional about, that's what you will create in your world. That's what you will experience of creation. So whenever you become completely absorbed in an emotional state, you are at that moment assuming the feeling of the wish fulfilled and you will experience more of that and manifest more of that when you become emotional about something in your world. Welcome back to the channel, guys. We are getting into chapter 13, Acceptance. This is Neville Goddard, The Power of Awareness. And we're gonna start off here with William Blake. Man's perceptions are not bounded by organs of perception. He perceives more than sense, though ever so acute, can discover. So you are not limited to your 3D world. The way that you see your world is not the real world. The real world is your imagination, and that's how you create. And through your feeling states, with your imagination and when you are completely absorbed in an emotional state that's what you will experience in your 3d world everything is within and that's what neville goddard covers right here neville goddard says however much you seem to be living in a material world you are actually living in a world of imagination so your world your material world that you see every all the tangible objects that you see is not real that is a hologram projected from inside of you from out from your imagination projected outside of you so we're going to cover that you are actually living in a world of imagination the outer physical events of life are the fruit of forgotten blossom times. So when, if you're not aware of, every, of all your feeling states, and if you're not present in that moment and controlling your feeling states and your emotional charges, then that's why you're living in a world that you're not happy with by not monitoring your feeling states and having that control of your feeling states from within you because that's what you're going to manifest into your world is your habitual feeling states and the things you become emotionally charged about throughout your day and your past. And that's why your world is the way that it is because of forgotten blossom times. That's what he's saying. You're like the forgotten uh, feeling states that you've had in the past that have created the world that you're living in now. But you can change that. We have the privilege of changing that. And that's what we're covering here. But we'd have to apply what Neville Goddard is teaching here. Okay, so results of previous and, and usually forgotten states of consciousness is basically what I just said. They are the ends running true of oftentimes forgotten imaginative origins. So things that you've imagined in the past, that's what has created the present world you're living in. So whenever you become completely absorbed in an emotional state, you are at that moment assuming the feeling of the, of the state fulfilled, of that wish fulfilled. And if you persist in that completely absorbed state, emotional state, then that is what you will experience in your world. So whenever you become emotionally charged about something in your 3D world, like something bad happens and you just attach yourself to it emotionally and you stay, you're like persistent in this feeling that this is a real thing that just happened to you, you are causing that to be recreated in your world in the future, like the forgotten of blossom time. So you're creating more imaginal, emotional acts in your mind to recreate new bad things in your life when you become emotionally charged about these things so be very careful about how you react to things in your 3d world and try to disregard them try to go into a meditation and just understanding this is going to help you navigate through your world and stop creating the things that you don't want in your world okay so all right so if persistent and whatsoever you are intensely emotional about you will experience in your world these periods of absorption of concentrated attention are the beginnings of the things you harvest all right so you're absorb basically when you feel that something is real and you become emotionally charged about it and your attention is concentrated on that these are the beginnings of things that you will harvest in the future you're going to manifest them it and it is in these such moments that you are exercising your creative power. When you, when you have concentrated attention on something, on a feeling state, either being emotionally charged about something, whether it's positive or negative, that's when you're exercising your creative power. So once something really, really good happens or, you, or you're very grateful about your life, you're becoming, you're concentrating your attention on all the great things that you have in your life, then you are harvesting or you're creating better things to come in your future. That's why gratitude is so important. When you can stay in a state of gratitude, you are doing this. You are becoming emotionally charged about all the great 
abundant things that you have in your life and then more things will come into your life because that's what you're creating and you're going to harvest in the future by being grateful by being positive so these things the way that you that the way that you navigate your world through these emotional states is very important if you're trying to manifest the, the world that you want so if you find yourself being negative and becoming emotionally charged throughout your day you know about negative things or bad things that have happened or thinking about the past in bad in bad ways you know you you're thinking about your past and things that have happened to you the trauma you're creating more of that to happen to you in the future and by thinking that it's real because the 3d world is just a hologram of projection and you make it real by feeling that it's real you know when things that have happened to you in the past that you don't like and you're stuck on those emotionally those things are being recreated in your world because you are being you you are creating that concentrated attention on those things. All right, so this is where Neville Goddard gets into uh, mentally rehearsing something or visualizing something and making it so real that it's actually a shock to you when you come out of your imaginal act, like in the state akin to sleep, when you get into the sats, the state akin to sleep, or into the drift, and you really completely absorb yourself in a visual scene, then you come back and it's an actual shock. That's when you've done it. That's when you've shocked that positron and then created that event. Okay, so at the end of these periods or moments of absorption, you speed from these imagined states where you have not been physically to where you were physically an instant ago. And in these periods, the imagined state is so real that when you return to the objective world and find that it is not the same as the imagined state is an actual shock to you. So this exercise that Neville Goddard is talking about is not actually necessary to create an event, but it will actually create an event if you can get so deep in your imagined state and make it so real to you as if it's as real to you as the forms of reality are right now to you. So in your 3D world, if you can create an imaginal scene that's this real, then it has to take place just like 3D reality. If you can make your imagined state as real as 3D reality, and then you go into this imagined state, then you, when you come back, it's an actual shock to you because you've been to a different world that you created in your imagination. Like every part of it, you've created it, all the senses, you've created a visual scene in the future and made it now, then when you come back from that, you've shocked the, the positron, which is a positive running electron, and then you will, you will be led to that event and it absolutely will happen if you create that but it's not necessary to actually get that in depth and in detail and in that concentrated moment and create all the sense it's not necessary to create it create an event but if you want to create a specific event like you can give, you can make specific things like really really specific things to happen when you can create an imaginal act and make it so real just as real as your 3d world you can make something happen exactly like that like to the t to the mark like exactly like your imaginal act when you shock the positron shock time sense and create that scene in your mind as if it's real because it has to once you create something in your imagination that's just as real as your 3d world it is real it is real and it will happen exactly like that all right so this like right here you have seen something in imagination with such vividness that you now wonder whether the evidence of your senses can now be believed and like keats you ask was it a vision or a waking dream fled is that music do i wake or sleep all right so the shock reverses your time sense by this is meant that instead of your experience resulting from your past it now becomes the result of being in imagination where you have not yet been physically so you've gone into the future shocked the positron created something and you will be shifted your life will be shifted into this new parallel reality where what you have imagined will take place so you can create things this way once you get this experienced and some of you guys already out there can probably already do this but you can get to this level but it's not necessary to start changing your world and you can start changing your world just by not reacting and becoming emotionally charged about things like negative things in your world and start being po and start being emotionally charged about the positive things and you'll start completely changing your life and you could start that you can do this by being grateful and becoming emotionally charged about all the great things writing down things that you have in your life right now focused on all the great things that you have in your life that you've forgotten about you can start being grateful about those things and become emotional charged and you will start recreating a new future but if you want to create something specific like i'm talking like to the t specific and you can get this in your imagination and create a scene just as real as 3d reality you can actually do this this is actually something that can be done 
By this is meant instead of experiencing results from your past, it would now be the result of being in imagination. So you're going in imagination in the future where you have not been physically. In effect, this moves you across a bridge of incident to the physical realization of your imagined state. The man who at will can assume whatever state he pleases has found the keys to the kingdom of heaven. All right, so the keys are desire, imagination, and a steadily focused attention on the feeling of the wish fulfilled. To such a man, any undesirable objective fact is no longer a reality and the ardent wish no longer a dream. And when you're able to get to this level where you can imagine anything and create something in the future, then make it so real and have a steadily focused attention on that feeling as if it's already fulfilled during this meditation like he says here you can create anything you want you have no you no longer have to worry about anything you can change and alter and manipulate your world as you please transfer to different parallel realities and just push your way to ultimate success or or happiness or wherever you want to lead your life to so prove me now herewith saith the lord of hosts if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Malachi 3.10. Okay, so Neville Goddard interpret, interprets in Malachi 3.10 right here. Okay, so the windows of heaven may not be opened and the treasures seized by a strong will, but they open of themselves and present their treasures as a free gift, a gift that comes when absorption reaches such a degree that it results in a feeling of complete acceptance acceptance so when you like what are you talking about when you go into your imaginal act you make it so real that when you come back you're actually shocked when you come back because you were in a, a real world in your imagination and the real world is actually your imagination so when you can create a scene in your imagination that's real that is actually more real than your actual 3d world because the real you lives in your imagination it's not the person that you see in the mirror it's actually the person that is that is in imagination that creates and that's god that creates because you are we are particles of god and christ lives in you okay so the passage from your present state to the feeling of your wish fulfilled is not across a gap okay so because the fourth dimension time and space i mean they're the past and the future are they're all existent right now in the present moment okay so there's you're not traveling anywhere you're not going anywhere because what you want already exists because creation is finished so all you have to do is connect with that with the feeling state of becoming like emotionally charged with a feeling state of the thing that you want so you're not moving across a gap so you're just basically folding you know if you want to have that analogy like folding a piece of paper over and then connecting to the thing itself you're not going you're not traveling anywhere there is continuity between the so-called real and unreal to cross from one state of, to the other you simply extend your feelers trust your touch and enter fully into the spirit of what you are doing so you must believe in it. So when you're believing in something, you're making it real, okay? So when just like your 3D world now, you step outside and you're looking around, you get in your car, you start your car, you start driving your car, that's real to you. That is real to you and you believe that it's real. That's why it is real. It's because you believe that it's real because all of your senses and you're feeling things, you're touching things, you're smelling things, you're hearing things, so it becomes real to you. So when you can create something in your imagination that that's that is that real then it has to manifest and you have to be led to that moment because it was that real to you okay so right here okay so trust your feelers trust your touch and enter fully into the spirit of what you are imagining All right so we got zachariah 4 6 here not by might nor by power but by my spirit saith the lord of hosts Assume the spirit, the feeling of the wish fulfilled, and you will have opened the windows to receive the blessing. To assume a state is to get into the spirit of it. Your triumphs will be a surprise only to those who did not know your hidden passage from the state of longing to the assumption of the wish fulfilled. The Lord of hosts will not respond to your wish until you have assumed the feeling of already being what you want to be. And you could do that through increments. You know, you could start off by not reacting to the negative things in your life and start reacting to the positive things and start understanding that your 3D reality is only real when you make it real and you do that through your emotional charges of it. So when you when you become emotionally charged about something, then you're making it real in your world, then it will be recreated 
in your world in the future. So you can start doing this, start changing your world very simply by not being not being reactive to the negative things in your world. When something very emotional happens to you and it's something that you don't like, do not become emotionally charged about that. Do not react to that. Change it up and start maybe start writing, start thinking of things that you're grateful for. Start um, changing your feeling state. Start focusing your attention on something entirely different. You know, change it up. Start being grateful. Do a gratitude list. Start imagining something or thinking of something that happened to you that was great in your life, you know, and totally just, just completely disregard that. Don't become emotionally charged about those things. Only become emotionally charged about the things that you want to create more of in your life. Because when you become emotionally charged about negative things in your life, then you are re you're, you're telling your 3D world that you want more of that. Do you want more of that? Absolutely not. So think of that when you become emotionally charged about something in your feeling states, about negative things. Do I want more of this? And if you do, then become emotionally charged about it. But if you do not want more of that, do not become emotionally charged about it. Move on. Be grateful. Focus on something else that's positive in your world. All right, guys, we got the next chapter here. This one is going to be great. It's the effortless way, chapter 14, but we are going to get into that in the next video. Let me give you a brief recap here of what we want to cover, which was very important, Is which is whenever you become completely absorbed in an emotional state, you are at that moment assuming the feeling of the wish fulfilled. And if you persist in that whatsoever you are intensely emotional about, you will, you will experience that in your world. So exactly what we just went over. Do not become emotionally charged about things you don't want in your life and look at it that way. When you when something bad happens and you react to it, just think of that. Be like, do I want more of this in my life? And if you answer no to that, then do not have absorbed attention on that. Totally break yourself free from that by getting into gratitude, by focusing your attention on something that you do want to happen. And if I had to suggest something, I would say check out the Gratitude Crash Course in Neville Book. The link is in the description below. That's just one of the courses we offer in there. All right, guys, I'll see you guys in the next video. Don't forget to give me one thing you guys are grateful for. I love you guys very much. In this video, I'm going to break down the elements of the effortless way and the principle of least action as it relates to manifesting things to come into your life. What is the most effective way? And that is least action, the effortless way. This is from Neville Goddard's Power of Awareness, Chapter 14, The Effortless Way. I'm going to break this down because creation is finished. So you don't have to travel to get your manifestation. You don't have to travel anywhere. And when you can get that out of your mind and understand that, that it's a psychological journey, not a physical journey, there's nothing separate from you. So when you can understand that and apply the principle of least action, you will understand that manifesting can be very simple. Once you get this down, once you understand this, and I'm going to explain this in a way where it will be simple for you to gather. Okay, so the principle of least action governs everything in physics from the path of a planet to the path of a pulse of light least action is the minimum of energy multiplied by the minimum of time therefore in moving from your present state to the state desired you must use the minimum of energy and take the shortest possible time and how do you do that because it's a psychological journey you, you go there through a mere assumption and which is a psychological journey not a physical journey it is not far away from you because we know that the only real world that exists is your imagination so it's all just about you understanding that imagination is the only world that is real and that everything is already created so anything that you want you can connect to that by taking a psychological journey and making a mere assumption that you already have something you're assuming that you already have something and that connects you to that frequency or that vibration or that feeling state of already having it and then you're directed and then you're taken to a different parallel universe with a version of yourself that already has it so basically that's what he's saying here so your journey from one state of consciousness to another is a psychological one so to make the journey you must employ the psychological equivalent of least action and the psychological equivalent is mere assumption and this is basically what affirmations do when you're using an affirmation you're saying i am rich i am successful i am in a great relationship i am this i am that what you're doing is you're making a mere assumption and it's a psychological journey that you're you're actually you're actually living in that present moment you're making the future now and you're making it like an effortless journey and it's a psychological one and you're making a mere assumption that i am this now or you're just doing wealth and success or you're or you're leaving the i am up but you're creating that 
feeling state and you're taking that psychological journey as you're stating these things, as you're affirming your new state, you are taking that psychological journey and creating that present moment feeling state or vibration or you know frequency, whatever you whatever terminology you want to use. Okay, so all right, so this is important right here. Okay, the day, the day you fully realize the power of assumption, you discover that it works in complete conformity with this principle. It works by means of attention minus effort okay now notice attention 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 we're getting see he's always hitting on this your ability to hold your attention on something without any effort and the more you can develop your ability to hold your attention on one thing like and persist in a mere assumption with your de a, de a high degree of attention then you don't have to use so much effort because once you develop the muscle of the mind to hold your attention on something then the effort fades away then you no longer have to try so hard to hold your attention on the feeling of the wish fulfilled so this is a big turning point i think that i wanted to get into is because developing your attention and with coupled with the minus the effort that's where it comes in so developing your level of of the muscle of your mind and being able to hold your attention on a, an assumption as if it's already complete whether that's through scripting or affirming or mentally rehearsing something it doesn't matter that's what takes away that's what puts you in this effortless way the le the principle of least action so developing your attention the power of your mind is all the muscle of the mind is all that ability to hold your attention on one thing and that's what excludes the effort you no longer have to use effort to hold your attention on your affirmations your scripting or your or whether you're mentally rehearsing or visualizing so this is the key in in this chapter this is the key to manifesting right here being able to hold your attention without any effort. Okay, that's what he's saying here. Okay, so with least action through an assumption, you hurry without haste and reach your goal without effort because creation is finished. Creation is finished. What you desire already exists and all you have to do is hold your attention on that feeling without any effort. Right there, guys, the leaf exercise. If you are not already in Neville book, the link is in the description below start doing those exercises developing your attention and that'll take away the, the effort and that will propel you to be able to create anything you want in your life it'll help you in every facet of life if you can develop the muscle of the mind to hold your attention on anything so that's the key that is the key your ability to hold your attention without any effort okay so Everything is just excluded from view because you can only see the contents of your own consciousness and that is developing and creating a new concept of self by holding your attention on a new version of yourself or a new concept without any effort and then creating a new sense of awareness. And when you become have a more keen sense of awareness with your new concept of self, then you're going to experience different portions of creation and be manifesting new portions of creation that is already finished. Okay, so... It is the function of an assumption to call back the excluded view and restore full vision. It is not the world, but your assumptions that change. Listen to this. <laughs> it is not the world, but your assumptions that change. An assumption brings the invisible into sight. An assumption brings the invisible to sight. Even though it's already created, it is invisible to you right now. So it's like, have you ever read a book like, th like this book right here, The Power of Awareness? The first time I, I read it, it was a great book. The 10th time I read it was a completely different book. Like my awareness had increased so much, the book completely changed. And this is not just a tricky play with words. The book actually changed with my higher level of consciousness. My new awareness had actually transformed the book to something different than it was the first time that I read it. Every And every 10 times I read it, it becomes a totally different book. Every time I read it, I'm extracting something totally different from it because of my, my present level of awareness. And this is how your world works. When you're manifesting something into your world, as your level of awareness increases, you start seeing things that were invisible before that you wouldn't that you wouldn't normally be able to see with that lower level of awareness but now as your your level of awareness increases you will now see things that were invisible to you before and now you can extract this information and use this information to actually achieve your goals and actually you know create an entirely different life through your new awareness and this all comes back 
to your your level of attention like the ability to focus on one thing through like the leaf exercise the different exercises we do it all comes back to that and when you have that high level of attention without effort then your awareness and your concept of self your concept of self increases 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 and then life gets so simple as your ability to be able to hold your attention on one thing increases, life becomes easy. It becomes simple to do normal things or or high level things. It becomes very simple to do those things because your level of attention has increased so much that you're doing things that everyone's like, how are you doing this? You're the smartest guy I've ever met in my life. And I say, this comes so simple to me. That's just who I am because the level of attention that I've gained, you know, increasing that muscle of my mind to be able to focus on that feeling state of already having something and then every all the doors all the doors that you could ever imagine just open up for you in your life and everything just becomes simple at that point once you develop your attention and then you can start manifesting things in your world because you don't have to use effort anymore and that's the the principle of least action that is the effortless way and that is the way to create because you're taking a psychological journey so if you're using all this effort because your mind isn't developed enough to hold your attention on a feeling state then it's all out of whack okay you're using too much effort you have to use minus no minus effort with attention and that's how you manifest things into your world all right so let's continue here it is the function of an assumption to call back the excluded view and restore restore full vision it is not the world but your assumptions that change an assumption brings the invisible into sight it is nothing more nor less than seeing with the eye of god which is i.e the imagination all right so for the lord seeth not as a man seeth for man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. The heart is the primary organ of sense, hence the first cause of experience. When you look on the heart, you are looking at your assumptions. Your assumptions determine your experience. Watch your assumptions with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. All right, so this is the topic here that I want to cover about watching your assumptions with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of your life. So if your life right now is not exactly the way that you want it to be, it's because of your assumptions and your thoughts. All your thoughts, so watch your thoughts and assumptions right now. So having that present moment awareness, having that present moment awareness and that attention having that attention and being able to, in the present moment, watch your thoughts, watch your assumptions with all diligence and start changing them, start changing them because that is where your, your issues of life come from is from those assumptions and those thoughts, okay? So assumptions have the power of objective realization. Every event in the visible world is the result of an assumption or idea in the unseen world, guys, right there. The present moment is all important for it is the only is only in the present moment that our assumptions can be controlled in the moment. Our assumptions this is the, the present moment is the only real moment to make any changes. So slow time down with that attention. When you start developing that attention, you could slow time down and start with all diligence. Watch your assumptions, watch your thoughts and start changing them. Start manipulating your world. Start watching your world start to change when you start to do this. And that'll be proof in itself that this is actually the truth. The future becomes the present when you imagine that you are already are what you will be when your assumption is fulfilled. So this is where it is. So once you have the developed attention and the, use it this the effortless way, the future becomes the present when you imagine that you are already are what you will be when your assumption is fulfilled and be still, which is least action, and know that you are that which you desire to be without any effort, guys, having that developed attention on one thing, on that feeling state. The end of longing should be being, okay? The end of longing should be being. So that's where it comes in with that attention. Once you have that developed attention, you can be still with least action, go into meditation and use your attention, find the feeling state, whether that's from scripting or affirming or visualizing, mentally rehearsing, anything, find the feeling, attach yourself to it, locate the feeling, then hold on to that feeling with your powerful attention on one thing and develop and, and without effort, because you're because you have that that muscle of the mind developed, you're able to hold your attention on that feeling without effort in your meditation. And then you will have it perpetual construction of future states with this is important right here. This, he ta this is where he talks about the failure, you know, of most people that are trying to manifest and, and they give up on manifesting. And this is the reason 
perpetual construction of future states without consciousness of already being them that is picturing your desire without actually assuming the feeling of the wish fulfilled is the fallacy and mirage of mankind the stumbling block for people trying to manifest is this and that it, it all comes down to the point of this video which is your attention minus effort the effortless way be still in meditation have a fully developed attention and focus on this feeling state locate the feeling state that would that is your fulfilled desire as already being completed it's already completed find that feeling state and then without effort because your attention is so powerful without effort you focus on that feeling state and you fall asleep with that or you use that throughout the day and impress the subconscious mind with this new wish as being fulfilled without effort okay so because that's where it is that's where the effort is coming in because you're picturing people picture their desire without actually assuming the feeling because they're trying so hard to visualize or affirm or to script they're so focused on the act itself they're missing the feeling state they're missing the feeling state and they're using too much effort so develop the attention and that will propel you that will you'll get over your stumbling blocks right there and that is in the link in the description below that is neville book guys get those Get on those courses. If you're not already in there, sign up. And there's only $2 for eight courses, and we're coming up with new courses. So sign up. That link is in the description below. That will propel you to that next level and getting into the least action and the effortless way, developing that muscle of the mind. Okay, so... And the last part here is it is simply futile daydreaming. And that's what it is when you're visualizing or you're affirming or you're scripting without actually having that feeling state or absorb, uh, being absorbed in that feeling state of your wish fulfilled, then it becomes just a futile daydream. Okay. So you're not creating anything. You're just, it's just a daydream until you actually retain that feeling state of actually, if it's happening to you right now and you're in that feeling state thinking from it and not of it that we've gone over. All right. So this is going to be the next chapter. It is the crown of the mysteries this is a really good chapter chapter 15 but let me give you a little brief recap here the most important part here all right guys so all right right here your journey from one state of consciousness to another is a psychological one so to make the journey you must employ the psychological equivalent of least action and the psychological equivalent is a mere assumption so we want to get back to that power of attention guys your ability to be able to focus on one thing excludes the effort there's no more effort involved so you're able to hold on to a feeling state whether you're visualizing you're affirming or you're scripting you have such a powerful level of attention that's very simple you don't need to use any effort anymore you can just focus on it you know after especially after repetition of doing it you know and, and developing that that muscle of the mind understanding what consciousness is then it becomes simple for you and then we this is right here we hit it right on the head guys the effortless way the principle of least action all right guys i love you guys very much and don't forget to give me one thing you guys are great for and i'll see you guys in the next video because imagine that you didn't know what virtual reality was okay imagine for one second that you put on virtual reality goggles and you and you had no idea that you ever put them on you're living in a world a three-dimensional world looking around you don't know you have goggles on you don't remember putting them on you're gonna think that that virtual reality is real and that's what happened to you in this world you actually are in a world that you created but you erased your memory of entering it in this video i'm going to be teaching you the art of assumption because once you learn the art of assumption not just the law of assumption that it works but actually using the art of assumption then you can manipulate your world to the, exactly the way that you want it to be whether it's being successful and happy or creating the world that you actually want okay so we're going to cover that in the crown of the mysteries welcome back to the channel guys this is chapter 15 the power of awareness by neville goddard okay so the assumption of the wish fulfilled is the ship that carries you over the unknown seas to the fulfillment of your dream so that's a good way to look at it okay your assumptions like what you're assuming what you're visualizing what you're affirming what you're scripting that is your wish fulfilled that is the ship that carries you over the unknown seas to the fulfillment of that end whatever it is to your dream goal okay so the assumption is everything realization is subconscious and effortless the assumption is everything guys like what neville goddard says right here and i absolutely agree with him that the assumption is everything we're living in an assumptive world everything cre is created from your assum assumptions of it whether you're using them consciously or unconsciously you are creating your world through your assumptions so learning the art 
of manipulating and controlling your assumptions and how you're viewing your world and what you're imaging and visualizing in your mind, what you're affirming, you know, all day long. You may be using affirmations for five minutes a day, but the rest of the day, your mind is visualizing and affirming something completely contrary to that. So take complete control of your affirmations, of your visualizations, of your feelings, of your assumptions, and your entire world will change. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into this. This is out of this is William Shakespeare Hamlet. Okay, this is this is where they've been telling us this for such a long, long time about how the assumptions create. Like assume a virtue. There it is. There's that word. Assume, assume, assume. The art of assumption is everywhere. William Shakespeare. Assume a virtue if you have it not. Act on the assumption that you already possess that which you sought. Act on the assumption that you already possess that which you that which you want. Okay, so blessed is she that believed, for there shall be a performance of those things which were told her from the Lord. Luke one forty five. Blessed is she that believed. Okay. Blessed is she that believed in her assumptions or believed that this works. That way you start assuming and start using the art of assumption and creating the life that you want, creating anything that you want. Okay. So as the immaculate conception, this is where Neville Goddard gets into the immaculate conception. And as we know, you know, there was no man that impregnated Mary. It was actually God, you know, so to speak, the symbolic nature of it. God implanted you know, marry with the pregnancy of Jesus. Okay, so this is where he gets into this, and which is the foundation of the Christian mysteries. Okay, so the assumption is their crown. Okay, psychology, the immaculate conception means the birth of an idea in your own consciousness, unaided by another. All right, so the immaculate conception is has been misconstrued and misunderstood for a long, long time, especially in the Christian ministries. Okay, so what it means is when God implanted. Mary or impregnated Mary with Jesus, you know, and with unaided by another person, all that means is you can create anything you want all by yourself. You don't need another person. All you need is you to create an idea or a feeling, you know, visualize something that has already happened, implanting a pregnancy within yourself with your imagination, which is God, okay? So that's what it was trying to tell us. That's what that story is symbolic for, is you can create anything that you want by impregnating yourself with an idea or a feeling state as if it's already completed, and then that will happen, okay? So then he gives his idea or his his example here, okay? So for instance, when you have a specific hunger or wish or hunger or longing, it is an immaculate conception in the sense that no physical person or thing plants it in your mind, okay? So it's self-conceived, okay? So it is, yeah, right here. It is self-conceived. Every man is the Mary of the immaculate conception and birth to his idea must give. The assumption is the crown of the mysteries. Your assumption, the art of assumption is the crown of the mysteries. It is the highest use of consciousness. The highest use of consciousness is the art of assumption. When you take control of your assumptions and assume a feeling, of the desire already being fulfilled and you and you act this way all day long all night long fall asleep as if your life is exactly the way that you want it to be and it will happen okay so that's what this story is representing to us when in imagination you assume the feeling of the wish fulfilled you are mentally lifted up to a higher level when through your persistence this assumption becomes actual fact when through your persistence the assumption becomes an actual fact you automatically find yourself on a higher level that is you have achieved your desire in your objective world that's when it's complete okay so you have sought that you have felt that you have felt the completed objective in the physical world you have felt that in the psychological world then it happens in your objective world all right so your assumption guides all your conscious and subconscious movements towards its suggested end so inevitably that it actually dictates the events all right so this is really important because I'm, i really want to explain this okay so when you assume something you assume something as if it's complete and you actually persist in that assumption and disregard your 3d as if it's already happened in your mind you do this you do this through a feeling state Everything in your world, including you, is going to take you to that end. It's actually going to dictate the events that are going to happen, whether ideas are planted, implanted in your mind, and you're going to take action from those ideas, or they're going to, or, and, and, or they're going to happen in your world with the people around you. Doors are going to open. Your phone's going to be ringing. 
things are going to happen that are going to dictate that event to happen in your life once you have assumed that it is already complete. That's the way that it works. Okay, this, that's the most important part of the law of assumption or the art of using it and being conscious of your assumptions. Okay, so the drama of life is a psychological one. There is no physical world that is real that is separate from the psychological world. Everything starts from your assumptions. The art of assumption is so important to understand and use every day in your world. The drama of life is a psychological one, and the whole of it, it is written and produced by your assumptions. So I'm going to give you an example of this, how it is written and produced by your assumptions. A good way to look at your world, your the hologram that you're living in, is imagine yourself going into a movie theater. You go into a movie theater and you're looking at the screen, and all of a sudden, boom, the projector behind you actually produces the effect that you're looking at. Okay, so it's being projected out of the projector onto the screen, even though it's two-dimensional or whether you're, look, you're watching a three-dimensional, you know, with 3D glasses on, then it becomes three-dimensional. But it's usually two-dimensional that you're looking at the screen and you got the actors in there. You can see a whole entire world within this movie, but it's not real. Okay, it's all being projected from behind you out of the projector screen. That's exactly how this world that you're living in right now is was cre is created. Is it's a psychological world. This is a psychological world that is being written and produced by your assumptions from the projector, not the screen itself. So you're living you're looking at the screen, but it's not real. This hologram of life that you're looking at is just like it can be equated to that. It is so you can't affect anything by by touching the screen by you know by yelling at the screen whether it's something in the movie that you don't like you cannot change it you have to go to the projector which is in you the projector is in you in your in your mind coming out of your eyes projecting the world of space just like a movie screen except it's way more high tech than you created it okay so well god created it but we are particles of god which is the imagination the imagination is creating this world of space that you see this this movie that you're living in is just like that okay so the drama of life is a psychological one coming from within you and the whole of it is written and produced by your assumptions you can change the movie by changing your assumptions imagine you could do that in a movie theater if you're watching a movie and you don't like the movie but you're like okay so i'm, I'm not going to go move to a different you know movie theater i'm actually going to change it right here so you imagine, you assume that the movie is something different, then it has to change. It has to change. That movie's going to change. You don't have to move to a different movie theater. You actually can change the movie by changing your assumptions of it, by projecting a different movie, because you are the projector. The projector's not behind you. It's in you. And you can change your world by doing this. Okay, so learn the art of assumption, for it is the only way you can create your own happiness and success. That is how you dictate your world. That is how you create a different movie a different life of your movie because this is what you designed this world for then you erase your memory of creating it because imagine that you didn't know what virtual reality was okay imagine for one second that you put on virtual reality goggles and you and you had no idea that you ever put them on you're living in a war a three-dimensional world looking around you don't know you have goggles on you don't remember putting them on you're gonna think that that virtual reality is real and that's what happened to you in this world you actually are in a world that you created but you erased your memory of entering it you erased your memory of entering this world that's why you think it's real but now we are giving the keys to actually manipulate it control it and to live a happy life a good life, a wealthy, successful life, and create anything that you want. So if your life isn't the way that you want it to be, you did not design it that way. So start changing it by using the art of assumption, guys. All right, guys, I love you guys very much. And we will be getting to the next chapter here very shortly. Chapter 16, personal impotence. Okay, that is a very, it's a very good chapter we're going to be getting into. All right, guys, I love you guys very much. And this was the crown of the mysteries, chapter 15, the power of awareness by Neville Goddard. Don't forget to give me one thing you guys are grateful for in the column box below, and I will see you guys in the next video. All right, guys, this is important because creation is finished already. So we're only manifesting different portions of creation that already exist. So it is impossible to force anything into being. You cannot force anything into being because creation is finished and that's what we're going to go over in this video today this is chapter 16 personal impotence the power of awareness by neville goddard this is a really good chapter it's a short chapter but i'm going to reference back to magnetism and give you that illustration of how this actually works to help you manifest 
and different portions of creation into your life today. Okay, so self-surrender is essential. And that, he means the confession of personal impotence, the confession of personal impotence. That means you cannot force anything into existence. You need to acknowledge that you are personally impotent in that regard because self and self surrender is essential. So you must understand that and surrender yourself knowing that you cannot force anything into being, you cannot manifest anything with force because it's already finished. It's already completed. You cannot force it. And he goes over this in John. It was actually telling us in John five thirty here. I can of mine own self do nothing. I can of mine own self do nothing. You have to give it away. Self surrender by understanding it is impossible to force anything into being because everything already exists. All you are, all you're doing is assuming a feeling using the law of assumption, assuming something and then, and then taking yourself or bringing this thing to you and extending your feelers and bring the thing that you are, that you want into your life by assuming that feeling which actually works and it's very very simple once you understand that but you, but this is a very important element to understand when you're trying to manifest when you're trying to take your life to that next level by manifesting by using the law of assumption by visualizing by affirming by scripting understanding this point that you can't force anything to existence and you need to use self-surrender and how essential that is all right so here's where neville goddard goes over creation and how it's finished and he gives this illustration here which i'm going to take you guys back to that illustration okay since creation is finished it is impossible to force anything into being the example of magnetism previously given is a good illustration so i'm going to take you guys back to where he gives this illustration of magnetism to help you understand about self-surrender and using the law of assumption and how this actually works and how everything is not nothing is generated it's only displayed and he gives this example really well with magnetism okay so let's go ahead and jump right into this okay so the rich man the poor man the beggar man or th and thief or thief are not different minds but different arrangements of the same mind in the same sense that a piece of steel when magnetized differs not in substance from its demagnetized state but in the arrangement and order of its molecules, a single electron revolving in a, spe a specified orbit constitutes the unit of magnetism. When a piece of steel or anything else is demagnetized, the revolving electrons have not stopped. Therefore, the magnetism has not gone out of existence. There is only a rearrangement of the particles so that they produce no outside or perceptible effect. When particles are arranged at random, mixed up in all directions, the substance is said to be demagnetized. When the particles are marshaled in ranks so that a number of them face in one direction, the substance is a magnet. So the only thing that separates a piece of steel and a magnet is the arrangement of the particles. They're not at random. They're actually facing in one direction. So you can't associate this with the law of assumption about how everything is already created and everything is exactly the same, but you are experiencing a different portion of creation depending on how your mind is arranged. If you arrange your mind in a certain way, you're going to experience a different portion of that rea of your reality, but everything is already created. Your, your billionaire self is already created depending on on the arrangement of your mind when everything is marshaled in ranks in certain directions and your mind is focused and you have that ability to hold your attention you know on one thing for long periods of time you are now manifesting a different world now you have created a sense of awareness of creation of creation and the different portions of creation that you want it that you want to manifest into your world by changing your mindset by creating a new version of yourself changing the concept of yourself and understanding these principles all right so let's go ahead and jump right back into it here okay so all right so here's neville goddard he's going to break this down even further okay so you cannot make magnetism it can only be displayed you cannot create anything everything is already created so all you have to do is change the arrangement of your mind and then you'll experience a different portion of, of creation that already exists but you must do this by self-surrendering to this law and the way that it works and not force anything you don't have to force anything you're not creating anything you're just manifesting different portions of creation by changing the arrangement of your mind so if you're trying to manifest something into your world all you do is assume that you already have it you have that feeling state of already having something and that changes the arrangement of your mind to match up with that portion of creation that already exists okay so let's, all right so here's neville if you want to build a magnet you can only do so 
only by conforming to the law of magnetism. In other words, you surrender yourself or yield to the law itself. You must understand the law of itself and how it works. You cannot change the law. You can only change your the arrangement of your mind to conform to that law. So it gets back right here. We're yielding to the, you must yield to the law of assumption because that is the law and that's just what it is. That's how it works. So you cannot fight against that. You cannot force anything into being. The way that you create and or you manifest things into your world is by changing the arrangements of your mind, by assuming a feeling state, by assuming that you already have something, whatever that may be. You create a feeling state within you and you change the arrangement of your mind and your world will conform to that change. It has to. It has no choice. Just like the law of magnetism and the piece of steel. When the piece of steel is is arranged if the particles of in the piece of steel are arranged to conform in a certain pattern then it has to change into the, the to a magnet it has no choice that piece of steel has no choice but to change into a magnet and similarly just like your mind compared to that piece of steel when you have arranged your mind in certain patterns by assuming a feeling that you already have something just like the piece of steel when that assumed that it was a magnet it changed its particles and then it was arranged in a certain way and became the magnet okay it became the magnet just like you can by changing the arrangement of your mind by assuming that you already have something have to become a successful person or a happy person or in a great relationship or having a great physique having a great career if you are rearrange the particles in your mind and they conform with this new version of yourself then you will be it you have to have it but you don't force it you yield to it by understanding that and changing yourself within that is the key here guys all right so and in like manner when you use the faculty of assumption you are conforming to a law just as real as the law governing magnetism and this is a really important part right here you can neither create nor change the law of assumption you cannot create it you cannot change it it is a law you must conform to it you must yield to the law of assumption and that is just the way manifesting works that's how you manifest anything doesn't matter what type of manifesting you're using all you're doing is assuming a feeling of already having something changing the arrangement of your mind and becoming a new version of yourself and then when you become that new version of yourself you are now experiencing a different portion of creation that you have manifested into a new portion of creation that already exists and that's how manifesting works in a nutshell right there that is exactly the way that the, that it works and that is the law of assumption by yielding to it and understanding that okay so and it is in this respect that you are impotent you must self-surrender you can only yield or conform and since all of your experiences are the result of your assumptions consciously or unconsciously the value of consciously using the power of assumption surely must be obvious and with all of that being said and understood about the law of assumption about how you cannot change the law of assumption but yet that's what creates everything in your world you must yield to it you must conform to it you must willingly identify yourself with that which you most desire knowing that it will find expression through you yield to the feeling of the wish fulfilled and be consumed as its victim yield to the feeling of the wish fulfilled and be consumed as its victim then rise as the prophet of the law of assumption then rise as the prophet of the law of assumption all right guys so i'm going to give you a brief recap before we end this video and this is about this is very important because this is about self-surrender and this is about understanding that you must conform to the law you cannot change the law you cannot create anything you can only manifest different portions of that by the arrangement of your mind and you must understand that you must self-surrender you must surrender yourself as its victim of the law of assumption because that's how everything is created from within you internally then projected out into your world but you cannot create it you cannot change it you can only manifest different portions of that and you do that by changing the arrangement of your mind by assuming a feeling of the wish fulfilled of whatever you're trying to manifest into your world and then it then your world will change it will conform to that it will conform to your change of display within you so you're displaying a different portion of reality 
once you have changed the arrangement of your mind with different feeling states using the law of assumption, but you cannot change that. You must conform to that. Just like Neville Goddard says right here, you must willingly identify yourself with that which you most desire, knowing that it will find expression through you. Knowing that it will find expression through you. So all you have to do is yield, yield to the feeling of the wish fulfilled and be consumed as its victim, guys. All right, guys, I love you guys very much. And I do, I did want to let you guys know that I did open up an Instagram account and I do have a TikTok. So that is actually me that has opened up those accounts. It's not an impersonator. All right, I love you guys very much. And don't forget to give me one thing you guys are grateful for. And I will see you guys in the next video. This is truly important because each and every assumption that you make in your life at every moment has its corresponding world. So within the infinite parallel realities, you can transfer it to different worlds based on each assumption. And if you are truly observant of your assumptions, you will notice the power of your assumptions to change circumstances in your life, which, which appear unchangeable. If you change your assumptions and you're observant of your assumptions and you watch them, you watch your assumptions and you're determined in that assumption, you can watch your world change right in front of your eyes, things that appear to be unchangeable. Welcome back to the channel, guys. We are getting into Neville Goddard's Power of Awareness. It's chapter 17, All Things Are Possible. This is a great chapter. I've highlighted some points here I want to cover and break down for you guys. But the first part of this, he talks about Neville Goddard and all his experiences and everything that he's used the law of assumption for and all of his successes within the last 25 years of writing this book. Okay, so it is of great significance that the truth of the principles outlined in this book have been proven time and time again by the personal experiences of the author. So this is really important because Neville Goddard actually demonstrates, you know, with his own testimonials about how the law of assumption has worked for him time and time again, just like I do in my channel for you guys. And I post, you know, the testimonials of everyone in the channel that actually leaves comments about their testimonials. Then I repost them on the community wall. I mean, countless, countless testimonials, which is another point of this chapter, which is having confidence in the law of assumption itself. That way you actually put in the work and, and are determined to change your world using the law of assumption, which is that confidence. So that is another big aspect, a topic within this chapter that we're going to cover today. Okay. So throughout the past 25 years, Neville Goddard has applied these principles and proved them successful in many instances. I mean, over and over and over and over again. He attributes to an unwavering assumption of his wish already being fulfilled and every success that he has achieved. Okay, so he was confident that by his fixed assumptions, his desires were predestined to be fulfilled. That means he was applying the law of assumption. He never questioned it. Once he started seeing the results of his manifestations using the law of assumption, he knew he had that confidence. He was confident that by his fixed assumptions, that everything that he had assumed that he already had, it was predestined to be fulfilled. And Neville Goddard was completely confident and had faith in his assumptions because he watched it materialize in front of his eyes with that awareness, the present moment awareness and that attention and noticing when he changed his assumptions, he started to see his world change right in front of his eyes through his assumptions. And this is what builds that confidence, that confidence in the law of assumption, guys. And this is very important. This is why I always post testimonials. This is why I talk about my own successes with my own testimonials, because this is really important to understand this, that have that confidence and actually put in the work and see your own manifestations materialize right in front of your eyes. Okay, so Neville Goddard would assume the feeling of his wish fulfilled and he continue in his assumption until that which he desired was completely realized. Okay, so, but he also had that present moment awareness to where he, he actually could, he would watch his act, the world that he was living in would actually start to change as soon as he became a different version of himself. Like he took on a new concept of self and a new assumption, and then he would watch his world actually change right in front of his eyes with that present moment awareness. See people start to change. Things start to materialize and shift into different worlds by changing his assumption. Okay, so this is where Neville Goddard tells gives us some clues here. Okay, so live your life 
in a sublime spirit of confidence and determination and disregard appearances, conditions. In fact, all evidence of your senses that deny the fulfillment of your desire. Rest in the assumption that you are already what you want to be. For in that determination, you and your infinite being are merged in creative unity. And with your infinite being, being God, all things are possible. With God, all things are possible. With your imagination. And God never fails. For who can stay his hand or say unto him, what doest thou? Daniel 4.35. Okay, so through the mastery of your assumptions. So the more work we put in, the more work you put in and start applying the law of assumption and start building your attention and start developing your present moment awareness, you will start to master the law of assumption and start realizing that you can change your world right now. You can actually shift to different parallel realities based on like transforming yourself into a different person and, and looking out into your world as this new person and then you can actually witness your world and actually see your world change and materialize right in front of your eyes with that present moment awareness while assuming a feeling state or making an assumption or having a new present concept of self. And actually, if you're observant, you can, you can actually witness your world change right in front of your eyes. All right, so I've highlighted this paragraph here because this is so important. If you can get this, if you can understand this and actually absorb your current awareness with these truths right here that I've, that I've highlighted, your entire life will change. You will have found the keys to manifest an entirely new life. Okay, so here we go. The clue to, or the secret, I wanna say the secret, the clue and the secret to the real purpose of life is to surrender to your ideal, surrender to your new concept of self or your manifestation or what you wanna see happen in your world as if it's already happened with such awareness of its reality, of it being real, that you begin to live the life of the ideal and no longer your own life as it was prior to the surrender. So you assume a new concept of self of already being the person you want to be or have the thing that you want to have and who would that person be? And then you no longer, you no longer live as if you are this, the person prior to that assumption. You have now died to your old self, have become a new version of yourself and disregarded all appearances in your 3D world. So if you can get this right here, just get this and understand this right here, your entire world will shift. Your entire life will never be the same. Your life will never be the same if you apply this. The clue to the real purpose of life is to surrender yourself to your ideal with such awareness of its reality that you begin to live the life of the ideal and no longer your own life as it was prior to this surrender. And this was translated from Romans 4.17, which is, he calleth things that are not seen as though they were, and the unseen becomes seen. This is from this is from the Bible, guys, and this is exactly what we are talking about with the law of assumption here. He calleth things that are not seen as though they were. What does that tell you? That tells you that you need to assume something that hasn't that isn't materialized in your 3D world, and you act as if it already has, and then the unseen will become seen. Then your world will have to transform with that. It was telling us about these corresponding worlds that we're living in in the infinite realities in Romans 4.17. Okay, so this is really good right here. Okay, so each assumption has its corresponding world, okay? So every assumption that you have has a different world. It's going to take you to a different world. So you always have that ability to shift to an infinite or parallel reality by changing your assumptions. So no matter, this like my grandfather always said, he knew the secret. He knew the secret to changing or to solving any problem in his life by just changing his assumption. You shift to a different world, no matter what you are dealing with in your life, you can shift to a, an alternate reality by changing your assumption. Each assumption has its corresponding world. And if you are truly observant, this is where Neville Goddard gets into the awareness of it. If you are truly observant of this, 
you can prove it to yourself. You will notice the power of your assumptions to change circumstances which appear unchangeable. Okay, so if you are observant, you can make an assumption right now, like when this video is over, make an assumption like having something that you want in your life or actually solving a problem that you have in your life right now. Just do this after this video. Assume that that problem is already solved just for a moment. Just do this for just a couple minutes. Just go into a meditation and then assume that that problem is now solved or this person is now healed or you are now healed or you already have this amount of money. Just assume that and watch where your thoughts go and watch your world start to change right in front of you. Like you'll even have like family members or friends. They'll start talking differently. Like there's a, you'll start, uh, what I've noticed in my life when I've done this, I'll start noticing that the people in my world are actually different now. And then things will start to change. Like these little things will start to change and I'll start to notice that my, that my, my world has changed. I've actually transferred to a different world by changing my assumptions. And like he says right here, you will notice that your power of assumptions to, will change the circumstances if you are truly observant and you have that awareness and you actually notice that and are watching your thoughts and watching your world and you start to notice the things start to change. You will see this. So just do that after this video, just do it for a couple minutes and really be presently aware of what the things that start to change in your world. Be like, who is this person? This person wasn't like this yesterday. And now all of a sudden they're saying these things today. So you've changed to a different parallel reality just by changing this, just by changing your assumptions. The people in your world will change. The things in your world will change just by doing this one thing. I'm challenging you to do that today. Sometime today after this video, just just try that exercise and then you can see it for yourself and that'll build your confidence as well. Once you start noticing these things and start being observant of your world, start to change with your assumptions, then you're like, whoa, this really works. And then that builds your confidence of really start making some big changes and really start changing everything about every aspect about your life. All right, so you, by your conscious assumptions, determine the nature of the world in which you live. Ignore the present state and assume the wish fulfilled. Ignore the present state and assume the wish fulfilled. Claim it, it will respond. The law of assumption is the means by which the fulfillment of your desires may be realized or will be. Every moment of your life, consciously or unconsciously, you are assuming a feeling. That is very, very true. We are always assuming a feeling. You're always in a specific mood and you're always having specific thoughts whether unconsciously or consciously. So take control of that. Like what he says right here, you are assuming a feeling. You can no more avoid assuming a feeling than you can avoid eating or drinking or breathing. All you can do is control the nature of your assumptions. This is a big part right here. Control the nature of your assumptions. Be observant of your assumptions, of your feelings, of your moods, and start changing them. Stop reacting to your 3D world. Like Neville Goddard says, be an actor. God is an actor. Satan is a reactor. So if you're reacting to the day's events, then you're doing Satan's work. Then you're recreating those things to happen again. But if you're but if you're a creator, you're doing God's work, and then you're changing it. You're not reacting to your 3D. You're actually you're actually reacting internally. You're actually changing your internal world, which are your assumptions, your feelings, your thoughts. Changing your world to correspond, changing to corresponding worlds based on that assumption. So that's huge right here. All you can do is control the nature of your assumption. Thus, it is clearly seen that the control of your assumption is the key you now hold to ever expanding, happier, more noble lives. All right, guys, the next chapter here will be chapter 18. Be ye doers. I absolutely love this chapter. We'll be getting into that next. But let me give you a brief recap here. Okay, so from this entire chapter, I think the most important part of this was right here. And that is the secret, the secret to the real purpose of life and to change your life is to surrender yourself to your ideal with such awareness of its reality that you begin to live the life of the ideal and no longer your own life as it was prior to that surrender, which is right here from Romans 4, 17. He calleth things that are not seen as though they were and the unseen become seen. So this was telling us the secret of the law of assumption in Romans 4, 17. And also each assumption has its corresponding world change your assumptions you're changing your world and you have that ability to transfer to different parallel realities based on your assumptions so be observant start watching yours start watching your assumptions your feelings your moods because that is the reason the you are in the world you're living so change those be observant 
be uh, have that awareness of changing your assumptions live as if you already have it and then then observe your world start to change based on your new assumptions guys and try that exercise by assuming assume that you already have something or you've already got this problem solved and be observant of your world start to change right in front of your eyes all right guys i love you guys very much and i will see you guys in the next video and don't forget to give me one thing you guys are grateful for thank you So this is what you do. You get a flashcard, you write whatever specific goal that you have right now. Whatever you're trying to create and manifest into your world, you actually write that question down as if it's already happened. How would I feel if this was already done? Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm going to give you an exercise on creating a new ideal version of yourself, something to help you be persistent in the feeling of your wish fulfilled throughout the day, because that's what Neville Goddard covers in this chapter. Be ye doers of the word and not just hearers only, but there's actually some other things here that I'm going to cover that are going to assist you. This is chapter 18, Neville Goddard's power of awareness. I want to break this down that way we can help. And I got an exercise for you that I want you to do throughout the day, or at least a couple times a day. I want you to do this to put yourself back into this new version of yourself, because that's what you need to be. You need to be in that the being of your new concept of self and not just thinking of it, but actually thinking from it. And that's not wanting something, but already having it and putting yourself in that position or in that feeling state throughout the day is very, very powerful. So that's what we're going to cover in this video today. Be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in the mirror or a glass and goeth in his way and straightway forgetteth what manner he was. Okay, so this can be kind of equated to you're assuming a state like you visual, you're visualizing just for a couple seconds of the person that you want to be or you're, you're affirming something just for a couple seconds and you're and of the person that you want to be. But as soon as you put that paper away or you stop affirming or you stop visualizing, you have completely forgotten this new person that you want to be or you're not as you're no longer assuming that you are this person anymore you have lost that dis as soon as you stopped affirming or you stopped scripting you completely forgot about that that's what is this is what this means here when you look at yourself in the mirror or in a glass and you see yourself as you want to be as your new version of your new concept of yourself already having all the things that you want but as soon as you look away from the mirror you have totally forgotten who that person is and you have fallen back into the old version of yourself Okay, so, but we're, I have an exercise that's going to assist you with this you can do throughout the day or at least a couple times a day. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continue therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. James 1, through 25. The word in this quotation means idea, concept, or desire. You deceive yourself by hearing only when you expect your desire to be fulfilled through mere wishful thinking so what he's saying here is you're not actually scripting you're not affirming you're not visualizing that is a hearer of the word and if you're not persisting and you're not you're not consuming yourself as being the person that you want to be having the things that you want to have that is hearing only you are not being a doer of the word you're only being a hearer because your desire is what you want to be and looking at yourself in a glass is seeing yourself in imagination as that person looking at yourself like in a mirror in your mind as the person you want to be that is like the same here looking in a glass and seeing yourself in imagination as that person your desire is what you want to be already fulfilled that's the person that you need to be Okay, so, and forgetting what manner of man you are is feel, is failing to persist in your assumption. So this is where he gets into failing to persist in your assumption. But I don't believe that you have to persist. You have to try, try, try all day long to hold yourself in this position. I, I believe that if you do this just a few times a day, bring yourself back and bring those habits back of actually, you know, putting yourself back into that feeling state, like periodically just doing it just a few times a day bringing yourself back and falling asleep with the new feeling state is is very very important but that's what we're getting into here forgetting what manner of man you are is failing to persist in your assumption the perfect law of liberty is the law which makes possible liberation from limitation that is the law of assumption to continue in the perfect law of liberty is to persist 
in the assumption that your desire is already fulfilled. I believe that if you just do this a few times a day, which I'm gonna give you this exercise here in a second, do this just a couple times a day or a few times a day, you will build up that momentum and you will be programming the subconscious mind with a new version of yourself that is actually consistent and is actually working towards being persistent. So if you just do this exercise just a few times a day, putting yourself back into this new feeling state of this new version of yourself, you will be impressing the subconscious mind with a new version of yourself in itself. Like you will be programming the subconscious mind to be more consistent, to be more persistent. And once you impress the subconscious mind just a few times of doing this, you will have created a new version of yourself just doing that. And then you will automatically be persistent and consistent as you're developing your new version of yourself. So this is like a, a win-win situation. Like when you start doing this, you start actually doing these exercises every day, you're impressing the subconscious mind with a new version of yourself just doing that. And then in itself will create a new version of yourself on top of that, of actually being the new person that you want to be. So basically, if you just do this exercise that I'm going to give you just a couple times a day, Doing the exercise and being consistent doing that exercise is actually going to change your concept of self in itself. That, that exercise is going to change you. So then you develop this momentum and develop this new habit and impressing the subconscious mind with a new version of yourself that is persistent, that is consistent, and then that will help you transform to the next version of yourself. So you can, you're, so you're gonna like work in increments. So boom, you're gonna get here and then you're gonna raise yourself up again. And then you're gonna impress the subconscious mind again and then again and then again. And before you know it, you're gonna be a master manifester by being a doer of the word and not just a hearer only by doing this exercise that I'm gonna give you. Okay, so let's continue here. All right, so you are not a forgetful hearer when you keep the feeling of your wish fulfilled constantly alive in your consciousness and you can do this by starting off just doing this a couple times a day and building that faculty and impressing the subconscious mind with a new version of yourself to be the higher version of yourself but that's really how it works is you start with these increments of being consistent and being disciplined and then you program yourself with being that disciplined new the new version of yourself that's actually keeping up doing these things and building that momentum and then when you become that version of yourself that version can now accept that and it's going to do it automatically and be consistent and then you can then you move up from there then you'll start being able to achieve more things and your awareness increases your attention increases just everything in your life will be much brighter and more and you'll be more consistent at everything that you do and then in turn be more successful in everything that you do especially by holding a new feeling state of the person that you want to be and then you'll have no problem doing any of these things okay so Let's move on here. This makes you a doer of the work and you are blessed in your deed by the inevitable realization of your desire. You must be doers of the law of assumption for without application, the most profound understanding will not produce any desired results. So you have to start somewhere. You have to start doing something, you know, as it relates to developing yourself and impressing the subconscious mind with being more consistent of holding your feeling state on a certain, you know, uh, concept of self. So to break it down in very simple terms, you must start doing something as it relates to the law of assumption and holding your feeling state, whether that you're actually being consistent by affirming or visualizing as you're going to sleep, you're being consistent at this and you're actually building this foundation and becoming a doer of the work and not just a hearer only. Because if you're not putting any work, you're not, you're not trying at all to affirm or to capture a new feeling state, then you're just being a hearer of the word and not a doer. But just start in increments, start doing it slowly just once or twice a day, or just working on it or listening to the meditations at night as you're falling asleep, doing something that is developing the new version of yourself to actually start impressing the new, the, the new version of yourself with the subconscious mind, okay? All right, so this is important. Frequent reiteration and repetition of important basic truths run through these pages. As we know, Neville Goddard does reiterate you know, a lot about the same principles and the same important basic truths, but he goes over how important this is for repetition. And then that, that's part of developing the, the new concept of yourself and impressing the subconscious mind is with reiteration, persistence. So what he's covering here in this book is being is reiteration. You must keep reiterating this over and over in your mind and getting and impressing the subconscious mind 
with these new ideas, with these new concepts. That way you start doing the work and start impressing the subconscious mind with a new version of yourself being consistent, being disciplined, and changing yourself from the inside out. So that's what Neville Goddard covers here. And the real truth seeker will actually acknowledge this and want these want this to be reiterated and by understanding that okay so where the law of assumption is concerned the law that sets man free this is a good thing reiteration is a good thing it should be made clear again and again even at the risk of repetition the real truth seeker will welcome this aid in concentrating his attention upon the law which sets him free all right so the parable of the master's condemnation of the servant who neglected to use the talent given to him matthew 25 14 30 is a clear and is clear and unmistakable okay so having discovered within yourself the key to the treasure house which is what we're learning in the law of assumption that everything is within us okay so we have the keys to the treasure house you should be like the good servant who by wise use multiplied by many times the talents entrusted to him the talent entrusted to you is the power to consciously determine your assumption. You have the power to consciously determine your assumptions in which your assumptions create your world. So you have the keys to the treasure house, the keys to your manifestations. The talented not used like the limb not exercised withers and atrophies. What you must strive after is being, okay? So once you once you are something, once you are being something, you no longer want it. That's why I went over the not exercise, the way that it detaches you from that want because I no longer want this because you're already it. You already have it. So why would I want something if I already had it? If you're already being it, then you no longer have that 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 wanting, you don't you no longer have that desire for it because you now have it. So imagine right now like you you had a Ferrari, you wouldn't you wouldn't desire to have the same Ferrari again because you already have it so you would you would, you're in that state of being you now have the thing and that's why I covered the not exercise the way that I did and that's why we had so many great results with that exercise is because right here you must strive after being the thing changing your concept is being the thing or having the thing that you desire already and that knowing you have that knowing that you already have it like it's that feeling it's that concept of already having it okay so in order to do it is necessary to be the end of yearning is to be your concept of yourself can only be driven out of consciousness by another concept of yourself guys your concept of yourself can only be driven out of consciousness by another concept of self so when you start actually using persistence and, and actually start being a new version of yourself you then are driving out the old version and and creating a new version and replacing the old version with the you're driving out the old one with the new and that's how that's the secret to replacing your your old concept of self by creating an ideal in your mind you can identify yourself with it until you become one and the same with the ideal thereby transforming yourself into it the dynamic prevails over the static the active over the passive one who is a doer is magnetic and therefore infinitely more creative than any who merely hear a be among the doers all right guys for the exercise i'm going to get to the exercise now all right so what i want you to do is get like a flash card or something this is something that i do when i'm trying to replace my current concept of self trying to drive out my current concept of self with a new concept i'm gonna get a flash card and i'm gonna write down the most relevant question that would place me in the state of the wish fulfilled of something that i'm trying to create or the person that i'm trying to be or i'm trying to be in that state of being i will ask like for example if i'm trying to get a million subscribers on youtube i'm gonna write down the question how would i feel right now if i had 1 million subscribers on youtube and who would that person who would i have to be in order to have 1 million subscribers on youtube and then i would i'll spend about 30 seconds to a minute on this question just one single question specific questions what you're trying to create into your life of the person that you're trying to be and then i will just resonate with that question and put myself in that state and either visualize it or i'll just keep asking myself that question and just absorbing that feeling of having these things already like i already have 1 million subscribers that question how would i feel right now if i already had 1 million subscribers on youtube 
And who would that person have to be? And then I'll then I'll define that and create like a visual scene, like almost mentally rehearse automatically just from asking the question. I'll be visualizing automatically. You can't help but to visualize when you when you have certain feelings and certain feeling states create images in your mind. So I'm automatically imaging myself as being this person that now has one million subscribers. And that sets the confirmation with the subconscious mind, because if you keep putting yourself in that feeling state, especially you keep this flashcard in your pocket and you pull it out a few times a day and just read the question and that reminds you and then you're being more consistent and then you're getting into that feeling state and then you're being a doer of the word. So this is what you do. You get a flashcard, you write whatever specific goal that you have right now, whatever you're trying to create and manifest into your world. You actually write that question down as if it's already happened. How would I feel if this was already done? Get as specific as you want. Write it out in your own format. Whatever words resonate with you most that can create a feeling state within you, the most powerful feeling state. And then you write it down, keep it in your pocket, and then pull it out and remind yourself to do that. Just pull it out, you know, a few times a day and read it and be like, how would I feel? Just put yourself in that that situation, you know, of that future state as if it's right now. This is already done. This is already done. I already have this. And then keep reminding yourself. And that's how you become a doer of the word. And if you keep doing this with repetition, you will you will change your entire life by being a doer and not just a hearer only, guys. And do this for just a, a series of days until you feel like a knowing or like a, a being. Like what I'll do is I'll, I'll repeat that over and over until that feeling is now a natural feeling. So I catch myself during the day, I'm like, I feel like I already have this now. And then you can move to the next thing. Whatever your next goal is, then write that one down. Keep pulling it out of your pocket, doing that, absorbing yourself in that feeling state of always increasing, always setting the next goal, always trying to achieve something great that you don't have right now, but you're putting yourself in that feeling state constantly by asking these questions. What would I feel right now if I was in this relationship? How would I feel right now if I was making this much money? How would I feel right now if I had this dream physique that I've always wanted? How would I feel right now if I had this, if I had that? Doesn't matter what it is, nothing is too big. Just start working on this and I promise you, once you become a doer of the word and start putting yourself in these feeling states, it will come to you guys. All right guys, I love you guys very much and don't forget to give me one thing you guys are grateful for and also my meditations that you fall asleep with every single night will also induce a new feeling state as well because falling asleep Sleep, as we know, that is the that is the door into the subconscious as goes into the drift into sats. You want to take that feeling state. So going right before you go to sleep at night, it's probably the most important time, but you can do this throughout the day as well. I do it throughout the day and I also do it before I go to sleep, especially when I'm trying to create something specific. And one more thing before I go, guys, there are a lot of scammers out there in the comments. So be very careful. I will never respond to you and ask you to contact me on WhatsApp. I do not do WhatsApp. I will never tell you to contact me on WhatsApp or Telegram or any of those things. So do not fall for those. That is not me. That is an impersonator just trying to scam you. All right, guys, I love you guys very much. Don't forget to give me one thing you guys are grateful for in the column box below. I will see you guys in the next video. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to teach you the essential elements on creating and manifesting anything that you want to come into your life, whether that's a new physique or that's a new relationship or a new career or just making more money to come into your life, manifesting more money to come into your life. You can do that if you follow these essentials. So if you're waking up in the morning and looking in the mirror and you're not happy with your physique, you're not happy with your appearance, these essential elements, you understand these essential elements, you can change this very simply by rearranging the structure of your mind and following the elements in this video. Same goes for relationships, for the love in your life, for your career, for the money. You want to make large amounts of money. You follow the essentials that I'm going to lay out for you in this video from Neville Goddard's Power of Awareness, Chapter 19, Essentials. And you could even set out, if you want to, you could even set out to disprove me by applying what I'm teaching just to show, just to show yourself that what I'm saying is not true. And I will promise you that if you attempt to even disprove me, you will find that what I'm teaching and what Neville Goddard taught is the undeniable truth. It is the absolute truth that imagination creates reality. And if you set out to disprove me, to disprove me, that will ultimately help you. So I encourage you to do that, to try to disprove the, that imagination creates reality. And you cannot do it. And in your attempt to do it, you will soon find 
that it is the absolute truth. And just like my grandfather did when he tried to disprove Neville Goddard, he found that 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 was actually how everything is created in your world. And then he took off from there, creating a quarter of a million dollars in cash in a safety deposit box within six weeks after he found out the secret to manifest, with our, which are these essentials that we're going to lay out in this video today. Okay, so chapter 19 essentials, the essential points in the successful use of of the law of assumption are these first and above all yearning longing intense burning desire so what he's talking about here is you must want to be something different you must like if you're waking up in the morning and you're and you're looking at your physique and you're not happy with it you don't look at yourself and you're not like man i really love the way that i look i mean wow look how chiseled i am i'm, I'm in a great shape or i just love my appearance if you're not saying that every single morning to yourself then you can change that you can if you have this burning desire to change that is the mainspring of action that is the first element to start putting in the work to changing your mental arrangements because that if you're looking in the mirror and you're not liking what you're seeing then you have to rearrange the structure of your mind and start imagining and seeing a different version of yourself so that is the first element here okay so and with all your heart okay so with all your heart you must want to be different from that which you are okay so intense burning desire combined with intention to make good is the main spring of action the beginning of all successful ventures in every great passion desire is concentrated and attention which achieves its objective you must first desire and then intend to succeed okay so once you discover something that like you're looking at your bank balance and you're not happy you want to you want it to you want to have eight nine digit uh bank balance but you're not seeing that you're not happy with that practice these essentials and you can get that by just imagining and changing your direction of your attention and changing the and rearranging the your mind and understanding that your imagination can change that very simply by following these elements and we're going to point out here we're in the bible where it was telling us this symbolically as the heart panteth after the water brook so panteth my soul after thee O god psalms 42 1 blessed are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness for they shall be filled matthew 5 6 blessed are they that hunger okay so having that burning intense desire to change to transform yourself into a new version of yourself that is when you're going to put in the, the work and the action and affirm and imagine and visualize and and want to rearrange the structure of your mind to want to change your current concept of self and is telling us telling us this in the bible okay here the soul is interpreted as a sum total of all you believe think feel and accept is true in other words your present level of awareness your god i am the power of awareness the source and fulfillment of all desires understood psychologically i am infinite in series of levels of awareness and i am what i am according to where i am in those in that series okay this quotation describes how your present level of awareness longs to transcend itself right it wants to transcend itself you want to change okay you want this if you're looking at yourself and you're not completely happy 100 percent of your life then you're going and you are longing for to transcend yourself into something new righteousness is the consciousness of already being what you want to be so righteousness right there righteousness is the consciousness of already being what you want to be so here we're going to get into the second element that is this, the first element is desire a burning intense desire to want to be something different than what you are right now okay second cultivate physical immobility a physical incapacity not unlike the state described in keats in an ode to a nightingale a drowsiness numbness pains my senses and though a, of a hemlock i had drunk okay so a drowsy state in this state akin to sleep you don't necessarily have to really struggle with this state okay if you're just going to sleep if you're laying down going to sleep just lay in a position that you're that you normally wouldn't lay in if you're just going to go right to sleep that way you have a moment or a few moments a couple minutes maybe to imagine or visualize or affirm in your mind or even script write some stuff down while you're in this state where you're getting into that you know that state where you're about to go to sleep okay so don't put too much attention on this on this part right here don't worry about that too much about being in the state akin to sleep and worrying about that just get in this state where you're about to go to sleep and start imagining yourself as being the person that you want to be or having the things that you want to have 
All right, but we're going to get into this further. But one in which you are still in control of the direction of your tension. So you're not going to be asleep. You're going to be, you know, you're going to be very comfortable. You're going to be very in a relaxed state, okay? You must learn to induce this state at will, but experience has taught me that is more easily induced after a substantial meal. Like you feel that way, you you know, after you have a big meal where you just you want to just relax and lay down, you know, and let the food settle. This is like that state of of, of being comfortable and relaxed and loath to arise like in the morning he goes right here when you awake in the morning feeling loath very loath to arise like you wake up in the morning you're still you know half asleep half awake you know that is the state that he's talking about when you want to in, induce this new feeling state into the subconscious mind you know that's the most that's the that's the door to the subconscious lover okay so that's where you and that's where all impressions are made into the subconscious mind where the most powerful ones are made okay so then you are naturally disposed to enter this state. The value of physical immobility shows itself in the accumulation of mental force, which absolute stillness brings with it. So when you're in this state, the subconscious mind is more susceptible to your, your feeling states when you're in this and you're, and you're more easily to induce a feeling of something that is not a reality in your current 3D world. When you can detach yourself from the 3d world and create a new feeling of the person that you want to be or the thing that you want to have as already having it when you get into this state that he's talking about right here where there's an accumulation of mental force which absolute stillness brings with it it increases your power of concentration okay and to disconnect yourself from the 3d world when you're in this drowsy state and then you're imagining something that you want as already having it that is the most powerful time the most receptive time to impress the subconscious mind that's why my meditations are very powerful especially the the ones that overlap those are actually designed for hypnosis that are very strategically designed to hypnotize you and put you in a new feeling state and at the end of this video i will post that on the screen the link to though that playlist with all of my meditations that you can fall asleep with i have over i have over 30 different meditations that you can fall asleep with that are designed for this exact thing that neville goddard is talking about right here about putting yourself in that position in the state akin to sleep as you're falling asleep actually capturing a feeling state all right so be still and know that i am god this is actually a mantra this is actually the mantra that neville goddard used for his his vip um students in the back of the wilshire ebell theater my grandfather told me about this it's from psalms forty six ten. this is the this is what they would chant actually in in their med during their meditations or the beginning of their meditations they would use be still and know that i am god this is actually one of neville goddard's um mantras that he used with his vip students in the back of the wilshire bell theater all right so in fact the greater energies of the mind seldom break forth except when the body is stilled and the door of the sense is closed to the objective world so you're disconnecting from the objective world basically when you're when you're in this state half asleep and half awake okay so you are you're no longer connected to your objective world you're now more you're you're now right in the center of the subjective world and the objective world so that's where it's more easily you can more easily accept a new idea of your new current or your new concept of self or a new feeling state and disregarding your current life and creating a new feeling state of a new life right in the center of this which my grandfather called the drift and you when you can capture that feeling state and then enter the subconscious realm with that feeling state your your life will be transformed into something new whatever that feeling state was you know where the, where the subconscious mind is impressed okay this is where neville goddard gets into the third the third element of creating anything and manifesting anything you want into your life the third and last thing to do is to experience in your imagination what you would experience in the reality had you achieved your desire so once you have induced this state of being in the drift being half asleep half awake as you're going to sleep then you imagine or experience in your imagination either through affirmations or using sleep meditations to induce this state as you're drifting into the subconscious realm as you're falling asleep getting into sats so you're going to go into sats and you're going to go into the drift before you go to sleep every single time you just aren't aware of it that you're actually going into this state because you're half asleep and half awake and then you go into that drift you carry that feeling state into that drift and then it will be created in your 3d world once it's impressed with a new feeling you're in a different world so the subconscious takes you to a different world that's a corresponding world to your new assumption 
your new feeling state of already having these things. So then you're going to be shifted into a new reality. And sometimes this can happen even the very next day where you can start, you'll start to see huge changes in your life almost immediately. And you'll, and you'll think that it's so surreal, all the big changes that start happening in your life. You're going to be like, wow, how is this happening? This is so surreal that all these new things and these new doors and these, all these new chapters of this new books are opening in my life. And it's just crazy. This is how it works, guys. This is exactly how it works. If you apply these, if you apply Neville Goddard's essential elements into creating a brand new life for yourself. Okay. And then Neville Goddard here goes on to further explain how this works. Okay. So you must gain it in imagination first for imagination is the very door to the reality of that which you seek but use imagination masterfully and not as an onlooker thinking from the end, but as a partaker thinking from the end. We've gone over this, guys, and that you're thinking, you're thinking logically, you're thinking as an onlooker, you're looking at it at, at a distance and you're looking at it like it's a movie, like you're not really in the movie. You're actually looking and watching the movie. You need to be the actor in the movie when you're creating these imaginal acts, but it's not necessary to actually create this vivid scene. But if you want to create something specific, specific you can do this masterfully if you have that attention and you're able to visualize this well but you can use affirmations you can fall asleep to my meditations and they will produce a very good effect in your life and changing your feeling states and i think because feeling is the secret that's what i have found over thousands of experiments that i've done is that feeling is the absolute secret to creating a new life and and my meditations do that affirmations do that and visualizing do that mentally rehearsing scripting all of that having a new feeling state of already having something as you're going into this drift but you can also do it like like neville goddard says here and creating the end you know and thinking from it and and making a visual scene where you're actually in the movie playing it because that puts you inside of it and that creates a feeling state as if it's happening to you right now and then you fall asleep as if it's happening to you right now so the subconscious mind has no choice but to give it to you when you fall asleep with that feeling of already having something all right so his word neville goddard carries on here imagine that you possess a quality or something you desire which hitherto has not been yours before surrender yourself completely to this feeling until your whole being is possessed by it so you can do this with the meditations as you're falling asleep you can just surrender yourself to this new feeling state so with an effortless and, and using least action by allowing my voice to impress you with a new feeling state and just allowing it to happen just allowing it to happen but being present in that moment as you're drifting asleep and allow those new thoughts to enter those new feeling states to enter as you're listening to these meditations okay this state differs from reverie in this respect okay so like a reverie he's talking about here's like a daydream okay if you're imagining and you're creating an actual um, mentally rehearsing and visualizing a scene like thinking from it and thinking of it okay so it's like a daydream if you're just thinking of something you know it's at a distance it's not real to you but when you create something with a controlled imagination a controlled and steady concentrated attention then it becomes real to you and you're thinking from it you're actually in it and then it will be created and manifested in your world whereas a reverie or a daydream is this the result of an uncontrolled imagination all right so in the controlled state a minimum of effort suffices to keep your your consciousness filled with the feeling of the wish fulfilled the physical and mental immobility of this state is a powerful aid to voluntary attention and a major factor of minimum effort this is perfect, guys. This is for the, the meditations. I'm going to post that. I'm going to post that playlist right at the end. It's going to pop up for you. Click on that. Figure out which meditation specifically that you want to use to create wealth in your life, a new physique in your life, a new career in your life, a new relationship into your life. These meditations will absolutely do what he's talking about here. The physical and mental immobility of this state is a powerful aid to voluntary attention. So you focus your attention on the words that are being spoken to you during these meditations, and they will induce a new feeling state and control you and put you in a new state of being as you go into this drift that he's that Neville Goddard is talking about, where he's found the keys to actually where you can manifest new things and actually create a brand new life and actually shift to corresponding worlds based on that feeling state that you're falling asleep with. Okay. So let's go over this, the all the three steps right here, the essential elements, one more time before we end this video. The application of these three points are one, desire. One, guys, desire, you find out 
something that you want to change in your life, whether you, whatever aspect of your life that you're not happy with right now, you have to determine which one of those you want to change right now, because that's some of the work that you have to put in. You have to determine what you're not truly happy with right now and be real with yourself. If you're looking in the mirror, you're not liking what you're seeing, then that is something to desire to change, okay? And then you get into this sleepy, drowsy state. You find this sleepy, drowsy state that's in between being conscious and being unconscious, and that's the subconscious lover that you're going to drift into with a new feeling state so find physical immobility you're lying down on a bed or you're just getting comfortable getting ready to go to sleep number three the assumption of the wish for that is already fulfilled so if it's your physique or it's a new career or more money you find that feeling state whether that's using the meditations affirming or actually mentally rehearsing something as when you're in this state when you're in this physical immobility when you're when you're in that state of being physically mobilized laying and being half you know in between being conscious and unconscious you create a new feeling that it's already complete and this is the way to at one mint or union with your objective so whatever you have des your desire to change this is what creates that at one mint or union with your new feeling state of the new person that you want to be the new thing that you want to have and the first point is thinking of the end with intention to realize it the third point is thinking from the end with the feeling of accomplishment or a relief uh, accomplishment or relief not so much excitement but the relief of it that it's as actually over now that you already have it okay the secret of thinking from the end is to enjoy being it to enjoy being it the minute you make it pleasurable and imagine that you are it you start thinking from it okay the minute you make it pleasurable and imagine that you are it you start thinking from it one of the most prevalent misunderstandings that the law works only for those who have a devout or a religious objective. This is a fallacy. This is incorrect. It works just as impersonally as the law of electricity works. It can be used for greedy, selfish purposes as well as noble ones. But it should always be borne in mind that e-noble thoughts or selfish thoughts and actions inevitably result in unhappy consequences. So always remember that when you're using the law of assumption and imagining things, make sure you don't use them for selfish ennoble reasons because that inevitably will come back to you and create an unhappy life because there's no point in being rich or successful if you're not happy okay so do not use this for these selfish reasons because that's inevitably what will happen into this video but i'm going to post my playlist right here on the screen right now so click on that i have over 30 different meditations to assist you in creating a new feeling state as you're drifting asleep as you're impressing the subconscious mind so click on that playlist find the one that part that is that's specific to your desire and use that as you're falling asleep all right guys i love you guys very much and i'll see you guys in the next video dances to the rhythm of the eternal god